salutations all my friends and family, fans and followers of the Zeta Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining us here for episode 105 of The Revolution. I am your host with the most from the east to the west coast, like peanut butter on your breakfast toast, the one take wonder, the man who will steal your thunder, the one, the only, Emperor Zeta, and I am coming to you, as always, from the greatest place in the world, the Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. So, first off, this week I have something to show all you Zeta Nation faithful. That's right, the hair is gone. I do have the ability to do a full hawk now with my hair, but yes, the long locks are gone because, well, I have a job interview this week and I want to look extra spiffy. Besides, it was starting to get a bit long, time to cut it. Didn't want to get all shaggy in this way, Anthony can't pull on it, right? Great, good. Anyways, so back to the show this week, we have all of the footage from the Easter extravaganza that we had last week. Three different Easter egg hunts, we have Catherine going through, grabbing as much chocolate as she could possibly grab. It was an interesting weekend, I tell you, after everybody being sick, it was nice to have that break for Easter. And then back to the grind this week. One quick thing. Gotta give up some respect to the Toronto Public Library system. I've been using it exhaustingly lately. Uh, they are fantastic. I've read entire series of graphic novels, fables, hundred bullets, invincible, irredeemable, incorruptible. You name it, I've read it. Thank you to the public library system. And one thing, Mr. Ford, Rob Ford, as you're still mayor, for now, definitely cutting funding to the libraries, bad idea. Anyways. That is enough from me. Let's get on with the show. Rock and roll, baby! And here we go. Hello. Huh? Easter was good. Eight lots. Kids got a ton of chocolate. I mean, a ton of chocolate. Probably haven't gone in about six months since we had a few breakfast, lunch, and dinner. As for work, work week was normal, nothing really exciting happened. Well, I don't really ever been with the other side this week to do the doctor's mail, but nothing exciting. Sitting in the mail room, sorting mail and putting in the slots. Mr. Man's doing pretty good. He now likes to go, hey you, hey you, what it sounds like, I did it. He was getting into his, his vocabulary, I just wish it was more English. He's going to be running very soon. He's very confident in his walking now. I did it! He's very talkative, very active. He's climbing everywhere. And he's sneaky. Uh -huh. He's very sneaky. Especially when it comes to the, the remote and, and the telephone. My little cuddle bug. Started with the beating, ended with the beating. Gotta admit, liking the way the storylines are going so far. Love how the shield's made to look dominant, but I am really, really liking the shield versus evolution storyline. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the evolution reunion, it is nice seeing a heel faction versus a face faction. The shield are up and coming. I hope Triple H and his bitch boys let them go over at the next pay per view. I thought we see a new member of evolution or a new member of the shield. Maybe one of them turns. <laughs> Speaking of factions, the Wyatt family, Ooh, man, did Bray Wyatt's promos just get better and better every week. I do love the physicality, the beatdowns that they're delivering to Cena. I don't think Cena takes all the beatdowns. I tell you, that man can work. Nobody has the drive and ambition that Cena does. Still 10 years strong, top of the company, and he's still excelling to try and be better and better. Wyatt Cena is a great promo. I'm excited for the cage match. I think it's going to even up the series at one and one, and we'll at least see another month of Cena and Wyatt feuding. I'm excited to see what they have in store for the Sun of Sand Yes! 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 And yes, the Yes movement returned to Raw this week. My condolences to Daniel Bryan on the passing of his father, but the guy still came to work the same day before Monday Night Raw took a good beat down from Kane. 
This is the program we should have seen when Team Hell No first broke up, not this game going corporate crap. Wasting your time on that other guy who's now back to doing nothing. Kane should have feuded with Daniel Bryan straight off, and we should have seen the evil Kane come back against the underdog Daniel Bryan. Even as champion, he's still an underdog, which is great. He took three tombstone pile drivers, so they can at least make sense for him being off raw next week if he needs to spend time with his family. But to gra congratulations on him marrying Abella. Who knows, maybe soon I'll let him have a threesome. Boo, boo, boo. You know. And yep, no Zack Ryder. Once again, they're going to bring him back before his contract expires. God knows when that's actually going to happen. It's got to be sometime soon, man. I mean, the guy's been right in the pine. But I hear he did appear at the live show here in Toronto, so that's a plus. I am serious, bro! I'm telling you, they need to put him, Z Ziggler, and Miz in a faction. Add the Brooklyn Brawler as their manager, and they could be the Job Squad version too. I'd definitely be down for a new Job Squad. Starts with Zack Ryder as a leader. As I've said before, it's a perfect role for him, and the perfect manager for him is a Brooklyn Brawler. He's like, what's going on here? This must be your final destination. Okay, here you go. Next one. Okay. So this is the entire hall so far. You're going to be eating chocolate for a year. We still have Halloween candy to finish. Yes, come here. Surprise! Say happy Easter! Look, happy Easter. Oh, look, the family all on one couch. See, there's my cousin Joyce. Hi! Happy Easter! Oh, good. You guys are here. That means we can eat now. Look, Alex is actually uh, here. Uh, look, the whole family is here. My nephew and my cousin are here. Everybody's here today. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. That, we have these. Yeah, that's my piece. Look, we got Grandma on our show this week. Hi! Homeless guy to the front door. Hey, I think you missed one. Well, you stepped on it. I got it. Oh. Play with the chocolates. Got it first. 
Oh, we got an Easter Bunny. No, we do I don't think we have enough yet. We need more. Hi! Who left He gave me this. His name is no no! I lost the necklace for this heart. Maybe it's invisible. It's the funny doesn't send on me. I have a tea party. I miss you, Jaja. Cheese! I can't see that I need them put away. Mommy, I'm gonna tell Papa! Eating candy. Oh, and fish and stuff. Stephanie McMahon. She's beautiful. Even like Daniel and Brian Bright. No, I didn't do it. This is where we had to start our day because I totally goofed up this morning. Hello people, it is comic book day. That's right, it's comic book day. And we're out here in front of Catherine's school because I forgot her backpack this morning so we had to stop in here before we head down to Rob. So me and Anthony are rocking our brand new spiky dudes, headed down to the comic shop, gonna talk to the boys, see what they have to say. Maybe we'll see David and Paul, it's been a while, I miss them. We're gonna go get on the bus, head down to the station because we have a long trek to get down to Excalibur today. So we will. See you soon, people. See you soon, people. Second start of the right. Straight on till morning. We're here. We're here. We finally made it after a quick detour to Holy Angels. We have finally made it down to Excalibur Comics, the greatest place in the world. Mexico folks to solitude by us. Anyways, me and Anthony are headed upstairs to show off our new haircuts, talk to the boys, and see who else is going to be here today. I'm really hoping that David and Paul are here because I miss you guys. I haven't seen you in a while. Now it's time for the Steps of Doom. That's right. Steps of Doom. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. Okay. We're going to start off with a treasure that's been long overdue. The Frank Stein Alive Alive. What makes this a good book is that Bernie Wrightson, who used to be a good artist for a long time, has his drawing been very good for a while. But now he's kind of returned to his boots, which is, of course, the Frankenstein monster. The third issue, which is taking a year for him to finally come out, has come out. So I would encourage you to pick this up because this is beautiful artwork by Bernie Wrightson. The stuff is gorgeous. He hasn't done this kind of stuff in a long time, and I would real strongly recommend it. Story-wise, it's okay, but and in the actually new adaptation, if you can believe that, of, uh, of uh, Frankenstein, and uh, they're doing chapters of Frank whole thing as it is. The other books that I'm going to recommend is, of course, Uncanny, Uncanny Avengers, for one interesting thing. It's, and not just the, the, the fact that David Akuna has done a terrific job with the art, but also they're bringing back the Marvel uh, Universe X. Anyway, they're putting this into Uncanny Avengers. It's another little book here, the second part of it, as well as... Original Sin book. I'm not asking you to pick up Zero because that's not where the real joy is, but it's a start. You know, this is going to be involving the death of a certain character, not, not Judge Wink Wink Wink. Basically, we're going to have some of uh, uh, Jason Aaron, who's a very good, talented writer, and the, my favorite, Mike Diodato, drawing it. It's going to be a superb series just from the fact that 
some of the artwork that he had done with the previous just marble stuff. It's going to be eight issue series, two issues a month. Highly recommend to the comic book fans who enjoy Marvel stuff, okay? Again, I'll recommend The Invaders. kind of like the storyline, how it's going right now with this book. It's well written, well drawn. It's, it's not the 1940s uh, Invaders. This is a, a basically a contemporary Invaders <laughs> stuff. I highly recommend this as well. How many of the off, of course, is Warlord of Mars. The inside is not that great, and the writing is not that great, but this book looks like it's coming to end, so I'm enjoying it for that. It's one of the few Edgar Rice Burroughs books we can see coming out. So, Warlord of Mars. Not licensed by Edgar Rice Burroughs. That's it. This book right. will be mine. Just watched Captain America. Didn't go see it because my wife got mad at me and she went by herself and let me know. I watch it over the internet for free. A bootleg. In it, you can see exactly what all the conspiracies are about. You have the, the Nazis coming over to, uh, to the United States, taking over the CIA. As you know, we've told you the CIA was 60% SS, just like SHIELD and, and, and Hydra. They wanted one of the same for the Nazis, just the same thing with the CIA. Uh, they also took over NASA, which accounted for 90% of all the taxes collected. So they actually ruled the United States. And then Prescott Bush, Grandpa Bush, who supported Hitler, all this funding to this bank, and to the bank it was shut down by the FBI in 1944. Even when the Americans were fighting against the Nazis, uh, he was still shipping billions to Hitler. So all of a sudden, his son and his grandson become president. So it's all connected. A lot of people might think what happened in Captain America movie might not be true, but it is true. You can see it for GM, IBM, all those guys. Esso, Shell, they all help Nazis and they're still around. IG Farb and Bio, all, all those guys are all that are still around. They didn't die, they killed off the army and they, they moved to the United States. You know, they, they're the same people ruling Germany and Russia and all those guys. You think Putin's another side? No, Putin's the same. Man. He's being run by the same guys. They all set it up so it looks like it's all different sides. They all run the same. People. That's what I've seen the find in the internet, that's what they're saying. Uh, another thing is, well, here he was talking about uh, all the different diseases coming up and so forth. I don't know, uh, they seem to always go back to the revelation, you know, the four horsemen. Anything the Bible says they like to bring up, it's almost like it, it's their playbook. Exactly step by step, uh, just how the revelation, especially or Nostradamus. Uh, I don't think it. It really does happen that way. It's just very similar to the Illuminati card game from this, the, the 90s. The World Trade Center blowing up, the uh, Pentagon being blown up, uh, the Jogger card, the, the Tsunami earthquake double double jeopardy card, with the Japanese clock tower falling down with the exact time the Tsunami hit. Whoever is doing all this stuff, they probably like that card to just try and make it look like it's prophetic, but it's not. They're actually creating it to make it look like or something like that. They're the ones who control the same with the, the, I think, the Bible. They're, they're trying to do the exact same things. That's it. It's done. So ends another wonderfully entertaining edition of the Zeta Nation. Thank you for joining us here for episode 105 of The Revolution and come back next week for a brand new episode right here on YouTube. Go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel to catch the last six episodes we have left at one word Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. Pick up your Drop Dead Pinups Electric Night CD, check them out on iTunes, grab one of their t-shirts, and follow them on Twitter for all the news about their brand new album at Drop Dead Pinups. Don't forget to follow me for all my insights and predictions on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. And head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book and conspiracy theory related needs. And my client, Brock Lesnar, beat the streak.